Welcome back to International Iron. I am your host, Jeff Roberts, and I am here as always with the blonde myth, Lee Priest, and special guest, Jason the, Genova. The, oh, there he is. From, from Florida. The Sith Lord himself, Jason Genova. What's up, Jason? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm doing good tonight. It's around 7.30, 7.40 now, 7.45 tonight, so I was getting late. What's up over in Australia, Lee? Come on now, it's only 9.44 a.m. on Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Sunday here still. <laughs> Monday morning. See, I'm coming to you from the future, so I know all. <laughs> Lee, Lee Priest doesn't have Mondays. Lee Priest, uh, every day is the same for Lee Priest. Well, today today's actually a public holiday here. It's the Queen's birthday. Ooh. They have a public holiday for the Queen's birthday, even though the Queen's birthday was a month or two ago. They take a day off today for some reason. How old's the Queen? <laughs> 90. Really? 90. Wow, she's up there. Queen Elizabeth II is getting old, man. Well, she's 90 and her husband's 95. Holy mackerel. Wow. They got. Uh, they must have some money to keep themselves alive. <laughs> well, you know, they got the private chefs cooking the good meals. and mm-hmm. I don't think they'd have too much stress, would they, when you got that much money? No. And you just li- live off the people? Mm-hmm. So, actually, it's kind of ironic. Both you guys are uh, Star Wars fans. Who do you oh, think's... I'm a big Star Wars fan. I, I love I love my favorite, probably, Revenge of the Sith and Empire Strikes Back. What about you, Lee? Two... I like any. Empire Strikes Back was any, anything that had Darth Vader in it the best. Okay. Yeah, I like Revenge of the Sith when he converts back to Darth Vader because the very end is just like the grim end of his end of Anakin and the beginning of Darth Vader, and that's what I like. Yep. The end was very grim when he burns in that lava pit and he says to Obi-Wan, I fucking hate your gut, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and then they build him, and he says, rise, Lord Vader. Yeah, I mean, that's unbelievable. But, you know, um, getting on with my career in bodybuilding, I'm just going to talk about... I started back in 2008 when I was age 22, and I've really builded my physique up from the many years from there. From now, I was really small, and I was really chubby. Um, If you look at my old videos from 2008, I was very, very small. I was very smooth, um, very, very smooth. And the root, and then in 2010, I started develop i mean i was totally natural in that show 100 percent natural um we can tell for, i mean for freaking dieting and getting down the 100 and th- that was my lowest weight i weighed 170 pounds of middleweight back then in 2000 um 172 173 and 2010 at age 25 and i was completely drug free was pretty impressive i mean i came out big and hard and but probably my best conditioning ever and you would agree with this lee was the ruby when i did the ruby i came oh, out yeah. like that. what oh, yeah i agree i agree the ruby I came out in my best conditioning. I weighed 180 pounds solid. I gained some muscle. I hold it on the muscle. I really busted my ass. I was in the gym freaking like uh, three, two, three times a day, busting my ass. And um, just busting my ass, hitting it hard. I was hitting weights. Um, yeah, I was hitting weights every single day, three hours a day, and I was doing cardio two hours a day. A mountain amount of uh, you know aerobics and cardio and posing. And I had a coach at that time getting me ready for the show. And I want to th- say thank you to him and commend him when he got me ready for the Ruby. His name was Coach Andrew, and he was in World Gym at the time before World Gym closed the guy, down. The, Jason, J- the guy in the camera, right? Not the guy in the camera. The well, guy his with name the glasses, who was the guy with the guy with the glasses who was coaching me for my show. The, well, the uh, every, African-American everyone, guy. everyone, Jason knows is called Andrew. So that way he won't get him confused. No, there's two Andrews. One, the other Andrew was the one with the glasses, the built guy. He was helping me for the coach me oh. for the show, and he really pushed me the extra mile I needed to get ready for that show. What about and, what about uh, pushing down the stairs? What about PJ Braun? Oh, PJ Braun helped me a mountain, a mountain. Actually, when I was PJ Braun, yeah. I think I was, I think when I was with PJ Braun, I was my biggest and freakiest, actually. When I was with PJ Braun, I was an absolute freak. I was huge. I was like 225 at 5'7". I was big. Oh, I, I remember the pictures, yeah. I was big. I was just huge. I was like a cinder block, actually. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. At the time, I was running a whole bunch of their PHs. When they the banned, they, I was running a whole bunch of their designer PHs down here that were giving me at the time. Back uh-huh. when they were, back back when it was totally illegal, before they banned it. I designer you know, PHs. Yeah, before they banned it in Florida last year, they banned it. Um, so they don't allow it anymore. But at the time when I was using i was just a clean freak man what about the uh who, the bald guy who trained you for a while when you actually did get very lean oh yes adam thanks to adam i did get very lean i got down to 170 pounds i think that you should go i think that you should go back to adam because i think that was your best look ever you were well, shredded basically 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 i'm getting a new coach Penny. i don't want to announce name on here but he is a pro and he's real good and he's George from the 80s. he's from the 80s from the 80s he's oh, real boy. good um maybe it's a good thing it's a good thing you remember 
down to my opinion. I don't want people. PJ, PJ and all these other people. You've missed out two coaches already. It's a good thing you remembered them. Yeah, but Ruby was my best conditioning for a show I did. I mean, I came out as best as I could ever come. I really did put in a lot of effort to that show. I was moody as fuck. I was low on low. I was on low carb carbohydrates every day. I must have been eating like maybe 50 grams, 60 grams of carbs a day. I was a complete moody wreck. When I hanged around my mother, I couldn't even be near my mother because I was always angry and pissed off because I was hungry. I was moody. I was tired. I was worn out. I was just, every time I hit a weight, I was just exhausted because I was just so dieted out. Lee, are you what moody you when you're around Jason's mother? No, no. What, what did your mother think of that, Jason, when you're getting ready for that show? Oh, uh, right she can't bear it. Was she, she going to kill you? Me. She can't be around me that much because it's so bad when I'm on the low carbohydrate diet. <laughs> oh my she God. Can't, she can't, she can't, she can't be with me because we fight like that. We fight like, we fight like half dogs. She can't be, she can't be near me because Jason, um, why, what made you start making YouTube videos in the first place? Because I was inspired at the time, not just about bodybuilding, but I was inspired at the time. Social media was an outlet to show your body, to show your physique. And not just about that, but I also found out that you make a good living off social media and make a good income so you could support yourself and take care of yourself and pay the bills. So I said, well, wow, if this social media, if this works, maybe it will work for me. And I started doing it and I started, you know, making some income and then it grew from there. And I love bodybuilding. So I paid for my bodybuilding with the with the income I got from the internet. And, you know, the income helped me pay for my stuff and do all my stuff I needed to do and all the contests I needed to do, the preparations, the income did you buy, because, did, you buy your, did you buy your mother a gift for being so moody? Oh, yeah, I bought my mom many gifts. Actually, I uh, bought her, um, oh, I bought right. her one time about a, about a, about a couple of years ago, I bought her a nice diamond earring um, as a thank you. Just, I paid like just a couple one? Of and then I bought her about, about last year ago, I bought her a couple charms from Pandora, what was really nice, a couple hundred bucks on top of that. Oh, they're, spent, they're expensive, aren't they? they get expensive, the Pandoras, they're expensive. They're like two, oh. three hundred bucks a pop. Yeah. Jesus. So, okay, you can buy the bracelet, the bracelet's cheap, but then all the charms. The bracelet's like cheap, but the charms are outrageous. Yeah, that's where they get you. Yeah, they get you on the charms. So, Jason, are you still, are you still earning money via YouTube? Yes. Okay, very good. I mean, I'm making, I'm making, I'm making, I don't want to say the number, but I'm making enough to live off of where I, I almost don't have to work. Right. And I am building my own, I have my own clothing company right out right now, which just came out, as you know, the JG Apparel. What's that called? JG uh, Apparel. It's the site is jasongenovaclothing.com. Clothing.com. I have two designs right now. They sold out completely in a day and a half, completely Jeez. out. Yeah, they, they three, like over a hundred of them well, just sold well, out. They were wiped sold. out. Um, I'm coming out with more clothes, pouring it more into the company, making, selling more clothes and merchandise, different things, coming up with different slogans and stuff. So I'm working on that. And I'm also, I'm trying to be a businessman, but I'm still trying to compete powerlift body. Like what, what slogan, what slogans do you have on your clothes now? Are they catchy ones or? But they catchy one, hater rap, um, sickening, That's pissing, catchy. revolting. Um, I got one that says, um, it says, um, enjoy the men, me. like enjoy the moment, but it's enjoy the men. And it says, peace out, bye on the back with my logo. I have those. I have my own pre-workout drink coming out in about a, about a, about three weeks to a month. It's called the, uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, insane <laughs> game. No, it's called the, uh, piss pissing revenge flavor order. <laughs> pre workout drink. Pissing revenge flavor. <laughs> yeah. Mango or whatever. Mango. Mango piss. Nice. Yeah. Basically, every all my fans will buy it because my fans are like very di dedicated to me. Yep. I mean, I have some haters, but you know what? Any celebrity, any famous bodybuilder, any famous YouTuber is gonna have haters. I used to have haters. Chase everybody's got them. I mean, Chase, even, Chase even Brad, was a hater even, of mine. Even Brad, even Brad Pitt has haters. Even Natalie Portman has haters. Every celebrity who's successful, somebody's gonna be jealous of them, and somebody's gonna talk shit because listen, they're not doing what we're doing. They're not. They're not busting their ass. No gym. Sure Plus, doing. all the movie stars who are busting their ass to act are busting their ass to be good actors. So what are they going to do? They're gifted. So they're going to talk shit. Well, you uh, you don't know how to act or you're a fat tub of lord or you look like an idiot or something like that. Or you're on a bunch of Jason. juice or you're this or you're that. Did you, just compare your, did, did you just compare yourself to Brad Pitt? <clears throat> no, I'm not comparing myself to Brad Pitt. But what I'm saying, every celebrity has haters. I was just mentioning Brad Pitt for an example. He has a lot of haters. A lot of them don't like You have a lot of haters, Jason. Actually, you posted the video about being on the show and <clears throat> those fucking Trolls come out of the woodwork and they they hammer you. It's pretty bad. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Sixty six him, did they? No, we'll get no. to that later. No, no, no. Listen, um, a lot. I like how sixty six. As long as you don't sixty nine of me. <laughs> If I was to give a statistic of fans and haters, I would say I have sixty percent fans and forty percent haters. But the problem is with the problem is with the fans, they're too scared to talk because the hate 
haters of the jabber mouth. Right. There's just too many haters talking. And the haters, will, so the, 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 if the fans speak, the, the haters will attack the fans, right? Yeah, so the fans don't want to speak. They're scared because all the haters are going to just jump on the fans. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have more fans, don't get me wrong, but the haters are the loud asshole. <clears throat> They're pussies, too, I, I because at They're least... They're pussies. Uh, Most of them don't even work out. Most of them are fat or skinny. They don't even touch a dumbbell in their freaking damn life. They don't even... They can't even lift Sorry, the Cameron amount Rachel. of weight. Half of them can't even lift the amount of weight I've accomplished. They haven't gotten on stage, either. At least you've, uh, you've oh, gotten on stage. I've that proven takes myself. Guts. I've already been on stage four or five times, so I know what it's all about. And for people to run their mouths, well, you look like crap. Well, let's see your fucking ass get on stage. <laughs> compete, you know? Yeah. Let's, see you, let's see you have the balls to get on stage and compete. You right. probably would never have the balls to compete in your whole life, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know how many, how much courage it takes to compete in a show? I know. I've been there. <sighs> I mean, your people are looking at your body. I mean, you're you're, you're demonstrating your physique, and that I mean to have that type of thing, to t- have people look at critique your body is like it's it's and and you know what about bodybuilding? I'm gonna be be a split. It's not like the golden era, like the '80s, the '90s, the '70s. It's all political now. It's all corrupt. It's not like you oh, yeah. like when you were competing league. Preacher, bro, or, preacher. It's so corrupt because when I compete in the ruby, I may not have been the rip, but my legs were way bigger than them. I should have placed big, better because my legs so freaking damn. Huge. Huge. I you had do have good legs. legs. I will give you this. I had very big legs. I should have beat one of those guys because my legs were so huge, you know? You do have huge. good legs, Jason. I, I will give you props there. You got freaky legs. And I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have got a good scoring and they under, I think they treat me unfair because, listen, all these, all the fitness industry is corrupt now. It's corrupt. I mean, I will compete in bodybuilding next year. I'm doing a powerlifting this year. I'm doing a powerlifting show in Vero Beach, Florida. What's about uh, an hour and a half for me, two hours. I'm competing in that. I want to see what my lifts are. I'm very curious on my strength. Right now, I'm about 215. So I want to see how much I can pull at 31 years old. So I'm going to do that. And then next year, I'm going to go back in the body, but I'm going to dip to about 180, 185 and start competing again. But the only reason why I'm taking a break is because I want to put on a little muscle mass because I want to be a little bigger in the second this show than I was last year. Jason, what, what are show, you... What show, what show are you planning on for next year? Uh, the Diana Cadu in uh, Fort Lauderdale, what's actually an IFBB and amateur, oh. both tied amateur and IFBB. That yeah, would be an so. Diana, is Diana Diana Cadu still around down there? Is she? Yeah, she's still down here. She lives in I think she lives somewhere in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, somewhere around there. Are you be a light heavyweight, Jason? I will be a light heavyweight, but I'll be a little bigger light heavyweight. I'm thinking between 185 and 190. The Ruby oh, I was 180. The, uh, Miami I was 183. Freaky. So I'm thinking a little bit bigger this time. What lifts are you doing in your powerlifting? That'd be meet? freaky. My powerlifting? Well, my powerlifting, I hit a bench, a clean bench at 330. I hit a, I hit a, a depth wide at 405, and I hit a, uh, I hit a deadlift at like 475. It was pretty good. I want to get my list just a little stronger before the meet, actually. Yep, not bad. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm real. And but people, you know, I, I know you when you when you talked that did that first li- video, Lee. You were like kind of confused about what my problems were. But I'm trying to get yeah, my fact I a point, point. I know, I know, I know. But you didn't know, you didn't know. But I'm trying to get my fact point across to people around the world so they understand, so they hear this from the radio station. I do have learning disabilities, but I'm far stupid. I drive a car, I hold a job, I can eat, I clothe myself, I can swim, I can do everything. My only problem is, is I was diagnosed very young at about uh, two years old with ADD, HAD, dyslexia, OCD, and Tourette's. That's what I was diagnosed with. That's a good combination. Jesus. It's a massive combination of disabilities, but I fight it every day. Right. Uh-huh. I fight it every day. I fight it back. I fight back. I, that's what I want to do. I fought so, I fought so oh, hard no. to get in that shape. So, Jason, do you feel that uh, the, the things that you do, <coughs> do you think that bodybuilding has helped you uh, kind of conquer those? It's been it's conquered my fears. It's helped me overcome my blues. Because listen, if you put your hard work over your disability, you can accomplish anything you want. If you bust your ass every day and you believe in yourself, you can just accomplish the milestone. Even if I don't go pro, I'm gonna build my business, my YouTube, my clothing line, and my supplement line. Look at I'll give you one example. Look at uh, Christian Guma or Chris Jones or all those. Those guys have never competed in bodybuilding. They got great bodies, but they're making tons of money off clothing, YouTube, uh, supplement. 
supplement. That's what they're making. Look at Mark Lobiner. He owns a company. He has owns mm-hmm. his own supplement company. He's competed, but he's not competing anymore. And he has a he has his own clothing line. He's making a massive amount of money from you, YouTube and everything. Speaking of Mark Lobiner, you really uh, pissed him off one time, didn't you, Jason? I did really piss him off. We <laughs> made we 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 made up and we're friends. It was all the past. I mean, me me and Mark talk sometimes on texting once in a while, and we'll text back and forth. Say how you do. I'll say how you doing. You having a good day? I'll check up on him. He'll check up. Sometimes he'll check up on me and see how my days go on. You know. But the thing is, is the you know um, the Rich Piana incident actually was good and bad. Good and bad. The only thing it actually did, it gave me more exposure. It was good because of course. I, like, well, it, it, it was it was between good and bad. The thing it actually did for me got me a ton of views on YouTube. It got me a ton of money on YouTube. Was it that, was that the slap the slap boxing? Yeah, it got me a ton. Actually, after that happened, in like the first two weeks, I gained six thousand subs. Jeez. And then you, after what, a month, what, I gained 10000 because now I'm at 35000 I just grew so fast because of that. So, Jason, I want to get your opinion on that whole thing. I know that you and Rich have, have broken bread and you're, and you're good now, but how do you feel about what Rich did? Do you think what he did was called for? Do you think he kind of stepped over the boundaries that he should have? I mean, with Adrena, you... he stepped over the boundaries and they didn't. He, he crossed the fine line between the net. It was kind of, you know, okay in a way. He made me more popular. But the thing he seemed is... To, he seemed to, once he got into the slap boxing, he seemed to start to enjoy it a bit too much. He had that look on his face like he wanted yeah, to Yeah, he it enjoyed <laughs> it and, you know, that was pretty a shame but the thing would help me, it got me more exposure, it got me a ton of sub, it got me a ton of money off too. So I'm happy with that in a way because it's all over and done with and I'll keep growing my YouTube channel from there. Um, So, yeah, I, well, I, I do thank him for a lot of things. He did help me get more exposure where I do thank him for that but what he did was cross the line a little bit. He shouldn't, you know, my opinion on it, I think he should have at least let me take a couple swings at him not hard but like like tap if you know if he was just hitting me at the end real hard i think it would have been fair if he gave me like one or two small hits you know he should have kicked him the ball he should yeah i mean he should have gave me a couple little swings just just for fun i wasn't gonna hurt him i would never hurt him but he should have gave me a couple swings you know here here jason you can take a couple swings at me or something little taps so i'll let you play with it. but he didn't he just kept swinging and i think what he did was oh a little wrong yeah, in a each, way. Time, each time each time he swung like i said it be getting harder and harder each one he Swung. Yeah, but he stop. He knew when to stop because he's in front of a crowd at the freaking expo. He doesn't want to ruin his reputation, so he had no choice. To stop. Yeah. So the reason you, was he was he giving you like a hundred percent slap or like a five percent slap? I would say it was like sixty to seventy percent hard. It wasn't hard enough to knock my break my jaw out. Actually, well, the whole reason that he got so upset with you is because you order sixty six. I order sixty six and for reason. Number one, he kept ignoring my texts. I tried to text through Instagram and he kept ignoring me. And I said, "Listen, I want to collab with you, Rich." I I think you're one a uh, great uh, a great YouTuber and let's collab. I just kept getting ignored. I said, add me. Just kept getting ignored. Felt like nothing, you know. And I've worked so hard. So he said to email him, and I didn't know he had an email. Some people don't have emails, so I didn't know. Well, he told me. So you know, me and him are good friends now. I mean, I text him once in a while. He'll text me back. We're on like a mutual situation. We text back. See how we how each other are doing. But he was supposed to collab with me, and he never did. It was a pretty dang shame. I'm pretty disappointed in that. I promised to collab with me. He never well, did. Uh, should sixty six. Kind of what's kind of what's kind of uh, a lot, a kind of a twisted lie in my in my perspiration of a situation. But I think he was trying to get his his way out of it till the till, till the storm calmed down, basically, and then just said, "Well, I'm not going to go after that because calm down, basically." So, w- w- will you? Are you still open to order sixty sixing people, or if you I'll learned your order lesson, order sixty six somebody. If somebody attacks me, they get to order six. I'm not going to let just somebody attack you. But, but that's somebody somebody Rich didn't attack you. Rich didn't. Rich didn't. Rich didn't attack you. I know. What about, what about 69 or there, there was one person did attack me about a couple days ago. I was really angry and I did attack back. He took the video down because he chickened out and so I took my video down. But it was called a guy game, uh, something Shoe shoe Shine or Shoe Meister or whatever his name is. <laughs> that, that, that comedian always gets drunk who has over 500,000. Nah, yeah, the guy that eats the guy that eats shit you're not supposed to eat. He eats he eats deodorant and shit, that guy. The drinking <laughs> guy. He always gets drunk. And yeah, he's like, like Shoe shoe Nice. Shoe Nice, yeah. It was yeah. Like, he talked mad shit. He called me a retard. I shot I shot juice up my head and I got stupid. So you know what I said? You know what he says? I said, shot juice and I'm stupid and I got hit in the head. I said, you know what? That's it. I'm not going to let this guy talk mad shit. I'm going to order 6 6 So I ordered 6 6 Five minutes later, he got hammered and he took the video down. Lee, can you explain our listeners what order 66 means? Order 66. Uh, no, 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 no. I want, I want Lee, to, I want Lee order, to explain order, it. Order 66 is the Big Mac, large fries, and coke from McDonald's. <laughs> no, order 66. Oh. 
<laughs> Order 66 is me. When Anakin goes to Dark Vader, Lord Vader, Lord Dark Vader, Lord Vader. And when he becomes Lord Vader, the Emperor commences a Order 66, which means go wipe out all the sneak attack of the Jedi Temple, kill all the Jedi, kill as many Jedi as possible, and wipe out all the Jedi Council and get exterminate them and get rid of them so the, em- the galaxy can be the Empire and basically Dark Vader and Lord Vader can, can become the most powerful uh, Sith Lord Jedi so he can save his wife from death with Padme. He's trying to save her wife from pregnancy. He actually kills himself and kills her so she dies childbirth and he becomes Dark Vader. Okay. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, no one can guess. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So, um, Jason, do you have any questions for Lee Priest? I think Lee Priest, you're a great bot. You're one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. And all I have to say is, is you know, you know, you've really busted your ass. You've earned your, you've proven yourself over the years. But I want to know something. How, somebody told me about this list down here in Florida. <coughs> that worked with the IFBB before it turned, it, 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 the, a lot of the pros left. There was something what happened with a lot of the pros. They got fired or something like like that and they were banned from the IFB. What happened there, Lee? No, I just went and joined um when Wayne Demilia, who used to run the IFBB, he left and started a new organization, the PDI, which was gonna judge, you know, for better physiques. He wasn't he wanted to get rid of the bloated physiques, the bloated stomachs. So I'd been with the IFBB for fifteen years. Didn't he, he didn't he, fire you, did he? He just let you go. No, you can't you can't get fired because you know we pay for our pro card every year. So you know we're not paid by the IFBB. We actually have to pay them every year for our pro card. So we're independent contractors. So I figured well, a new organization starting up is a chance to make extra money and compete in different competitions against different people. So I went and did it, and then I found out I got suspended. And they said, "Well, you broke a rule." I said, "Well, you've got other bodybuilders, you know, doing gay for pay. You got bodybuilders selling drugs. You got bodybuilders doing all this other stuff, which is against the rules. So how can you find me and suspend me when you're not suspending the other guys?" And of course, I argued the point. They made my one year suspension a two year suspension, and then I finally got my pro card back in 08. But then I figured, oh, 10, I wasn't going to feed anymore, and I started doing. <laughs> Listen, there's 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 no Holy money. In, there's, there, there, listen, there's no money in it unless you're like uh, Lee <coughs> or Kai Green or some of these greats on the top. Oh yeah, some you gotta have a good contract. That's the other these, way. Pro, some of these pros don't make nothing. No, no, they spend money. They, 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 every year they would be out of pocket. You know, they're not making a dollar from the sport. They're actually the only one who's pay. making the big bucks. Phil Heath. The only one who's making the big bucks is Jim Mannion and all those people. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. listen, Phil Heath is probably the highest paid bodybuilder. I'm just gonna say. Yeah, yeah pr- probably, Heath. probably. Bodybuilder. It, yeah. it all comes from, like you said, maybe most of your money will come from your contracts and appearances and seminars or, you know, competing. Unless you win the Olympia or the Arnold Classic or the other pro shows, you know, there's not much money to be made. You could win more. Than all the stretch, money. Stretch that's it. why all these bodybuilders who leave bodybuilding are YouTubers. Like Rick Piana makes a ton of money through his supplement company, his YouTube, his uh, his clothing line. That's where all the money is. It's all in social media. Yeah, so yeah, not much. Unless you're winning the show, there's not much to be made from bodybuilding. All in that's social why. media. You know, it's unbelievable. You. Uh, YouTube pays out a lot if you're good at it. So does clothing and so does supplements. Where all the money? Look at look at PJ. PJ's a multi has a multi million dollar company down here near where I live in Bo- in Boca. He's he's loaded and he's not even a pro. He never went pro. He's an amateur. You're probably making more money than some of the pros, Jason. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm making some more money than some of the pros. That's for sure. I own my own condo at 31 years old. Jason, so you're you're a YouTube guy at heart. What what guys? What people on YouTube do you really like and respect? And what ones do you think are kind of uh, are kind of like uh, loonies. The one I ha- really is a loony is Jason Blaha, and I would pick the other one. I'd pick another one who's really uh, a loony is Vinci. But if I was to pick the ones I like, it would. And Chris Jones is a little snoopy. But if I was the one to pick the ones I like, I would pick a girl who's really, really a gorgeous girl, and she's really nice. She's always been friendly. Her name is Chelsea Lift. I will always say good things about her because she's always talked good about me. Uh, she's a big YouTuber down in Philly. I've always talked to her. Um, another, another Up one. And- Philly. Another another one I would give would be uh probably my yeah, buddy Nate. Philly. Probably my buddy Nate, PJ, um uh Zach uh, Zach, the bodybuilder Zach, who I think his name is Zach uh, something. Yeah. Zach Zyler. The skinny his guy. His YouTube name is Zach Zyler. He's an inspiration. He had cancer and he fought it back and now he came uh he had a, has a great physique and he's only twenty something years old and he's massive. He's like a hundred that, that, oh, that Jason that Jason Blaha, I always hear about him talking a lot of stupid shit. But I never oh he talks that. mad shit. And another one who talks a lot of shit I do not like is Jerry Ward. Oh yeah, I saw one of him talking about Boston Lloyd. It was pretty uh pretty ridiculous. Yeah, Boston Lloyd is a nice guy, but Boston Lloyd can be a little weird sometimes. I told Boston, why are you, you doing think? this crap on the internet? Do you know how dangerous that is? Yeah, show no, he, he's, and everything. No, people he's a retard. I know he's a retard. <laughs> that but- guy's a retard. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's a retard for what he's doing. But if you talk to him on the phone, he's a really, you know, he's a retard on the internet. But if you talk to him on the phone, I mean, he's nice on the phone. He was oh, always sure. nice to me. He's, he always says, he always said, he always, I mean, I, I, I think he is kind of weird to put that on the internet. But when I talked to him on the phone, he always talked good about me. He always defended me. Right. You know, I'm saying he's, he's a nice guy, but he, the, the, the shit that he puts out there and the things it's a little, that he says. It's a little too over extreme. I, I would it, agree. It, it's dangerous and it's wrong. So, it's but wrong, yeah. but he is a nice guy. Got him. Yeah, he, he is. He, he does defend a lot of people on the internet and sticks up for them. He's it's the opposite just, of Lee. Lee's an asshole, but he gives the right advice. Yeah, right, he gives the right advice, but I'm just going to admit, Boston Lloyd did defend me against the Jake Blaha, and I do want to thank Boston Lloyd for sticking up for me and defending me against that Blaha idiot and Jerry <laughs> Ward, because they're those are the ones I hate the most. I hate Jerry Ward and I hate Blaha. Hmm. So you got anything anything else you want to ask Lee while you got him on the uh, phone? Yes, I do. I have a question. Uh, did you used to live in the United States before you moved to Australia? Yes, I'm originally, originally from Australia, and I moved to the United States when I was 20 years old and pretty much lived there for 18 years and then moved back home to Australia. What part did you live in? Cal- what part did you live in the United States? Uh, Venice, California for roughly eight years, nine years, and then Austin, Texas for four years, and then I'm um, in Scottsdale, Arizona for about three, three and a half years. Yeah, um, you know, uh, have you ever been to Florida in the past once? Yeah, I've been to Florida. I've been to Disney World. I've been to Ocala, Florida, South it's, Beach, it's, Florida. It's, 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 it's hot here. You know, it's just humid in Florida like crazy. Yeah, humid. Is it humid, humid in Australia too? Very. Very. What's more uh, humid, Lee? Uh, probably Australia. But then, Oof. you know, I've been to different parts, uh, like down the south in Mississippi and that, and it was pretty humid there because mm-hmm. the humidity here gets just that, you know, the humidity where you just sweat, can't get cool. So, <laughs> But then we have all the dreams where I live here. So you have the hot summers where you're into the 40, 45 degrees, but then wintertime we get snow. So we go from one extreme to the other. Right. Uh, all right so jason um we'll, we'll wrap this up i just want to say uh thanks for coming on and uh no I problem think, I, I you think can that, have me you can have me on future shows anytime you want okay i think that uh people i mean like i said you got a lot of haters out there but i think they're all they're all pussies and i think that you deserve credit for for you know transforming your physique for actually getting on stage a lot of people won't yep. do for for battling your uh all the ailments you deal with uh and to be able to get on stage and, and put out a decent physique and, and everything like that I think that uh, deserves respect. I think, yeah, exactly. I think I respect that, and I think people. I want this interview to be, you know, just to, to show people that uh, you're legit. You're not just, uh, you're not just like uh, some people act like you're a joke, and that's that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? Not the case. And all I want to say is one more thing before I get off. Um, the podcast will be up in a couple weeks, right? Uh, a couple days. A couple days. Listen, can I download it with your permission and upload it to my? Uh, I don't know if I do that, but I'm just asking because uh, I if can you, just put. You can do whatever you want with it if you can find a way to do it. But I don't know how to do any of that stuff, so I'll probably figure it out. Probably somebody will record it anyway. They're all hearing it anyway, so they'll probably sit rock. Because there, there's a way to get it onto YouTube, uh, but I don't know how. But I mean, I'll, you may I'll be able figure, to. Figure I'll figure it out. Probably there's little tr- you know i probably could burn it or something on the m3 or something yep whatever you want to do just give the just give just put ironmagazine.com on there i'll give them the credit i'll give you guys the yep credit, no put put my name lee's name and and then just do it. it it's it's all good man all right brother i like to be on the show in the near future anytime i take want me back on let me know you got anything you want to say lee no just thanks for coming good luck in your powerlifting show let us know how you go all right no problem all right take it easy jason all right, bye. Man, a few words there, Jeff. Yeah, I had, I had to. I had to let Jason talk. He's the. He's the. He's the talent. He's a. Good, he's a good talker. Yeah, he is. Uh, he was more. He was a lot more. Uh, What's the word? He spoke a lot better than I thought he would on the radio. He, he, he I thought he would be a little more, uh, you know, a little more nervous sounding. But he, he actually, he was pretty articulate for, for what I expected. So it was good. Um, uh-huh. Let's get to these questions now. Back to our, did you read my comeback article? Yes, I did. Yes, it's a good one. Yes. I think. Summed it all up, summed it all up nicely with the comebacks from Arnold's day up until now. Well, right. the good, what are the ones that are worth talking about anyway? I'm sure there's lots of comebacks. Right. Some just, you know. Yeah, those are the only ones I could, those are the only ones I could think of that were of any interest to anyone, but everyone says that Arnold's the only person who ever made a successful comeback, and I'm like, no, Lee Priest made a pretty successful comeback, and you were off seven years, then you came back and looked pretty much the best you have, so that's, uh, how old were you when you came back? 40? Uh, 41. 41. So, yeah. I think you put 40, but it's 41. Okay. I just did some rudimentary math and fucked it up. 41 or 42. <laughs> it was two, end of 2013. So, yeah. <laughs> right. 41. 
Yeah, I think I think uh, people are are uh, quick to uh, dismiss that. Like it never happened, of course, because because of uh-huh. your situation with the IFBB. But just because you didn't come back in the IFBB, it's as far as a bodybuilding comeback, you, yours may be the best of all. I mean, Arnold's was good, but he was like 34, 36 years old. He wasn't. He was still pretty young, uh, and he was not his best. So you could make an argument that your comeback was even was even better. I mean, he won the Olympia, but as far as there's a very very controversial Olympia. That won. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> who do you think? Uh, who would have won a that lot of show? Were saying Men- <clears throat> a lot of people were saying Mensa, mm-hmm. like Mensa back in that show and stuff like that. But yeah, it's like you know because he came in and like he said in the article, his legs were really down and stuff like that because he was just getting ready for the movie Conan the Barbarian. He figured, oh, what the hell, I'll do this as well. And the crowd was just booing like anything on the video. If you ever see the video, come back because it's a good, interesting watch. It shows the whole show and the prejudge, or bits of prejudging and the posing, and then the interviews with him and Tom Platts and everyone. It's a really good video, so I recommend it. If you like pumping iron, you'll like to come back. So if you watch that, but in the end, they actually edited it out where when he won, everyone was booing. They actually put cheering on it, you know. <laughs> and actually, Weeder wouldn't walk out on stage and good present him the award. He wouldn't come out and present him the award because the crowd was going that nuts. I know Arnold. Arnold, but, Arnold has... said he, they said he won it mainly because Paul Graham, that runs the IFBB down here, he was doing some shady business with Arnold back in the day with importing cars illegally and stuff like that. So Paul Graham actually did some jail time for Arnold. So it's sort of like a gift. Well, was it the following year that Franco won? That was even a worse oh, call. Oh, oh yeah, Tom Platts, I reckon, should have won that one because I think it was him, Chris Dickerson, and Tom Platts. But Tom Platts looked freaky in that mm-hmm. one. Like everything, everything he should have easily. When you see the top three of them in that one, Platts should have easily won. Yeah, and uh, Franco looked not good. It's just uh, that that, uh, that was, was really that bad. Was terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> bad. And Arnold was a like a celebrity judge or something. There was some sort of fuckery oh. going on. Are you, are you saying there was politics back then? <laughs> Ooh, but <laughs> you know, it's I, I always thought the Arnold winning was he probably had the best upper body still, but his legs were down. With Franco, he was just not the. Yeah, there's no, there's the no. Yeah. I thought that was even worse, a worse call compared to compared to how you normally see Franco. You know, thick mm-hmm. and hard and ripped. He just looked like a shadow of his former self. Really, if you compared him at his best to how he looked there, it was just terrible. He must have figured if Arnold can do it, I can do it, and off he went into the sunset with his sand out. But how oh, speaking of comebacks how's um kevin going has he posted any more pictures lately or well he did an interview with bob chick and peter mcguff mm-hmm. at must did you watch that uh no i didn't watch it at muscular development and uh i mean he is he is very very confident you know how kevin is there's no uh-huh. there's no timidness at all because at one point peter says now kevin well, you, gotta, you gotta go in that frame of mind you can't mm-hmm. go and go well i hope yeah you gotta go in even if you knew in the back of your mind you might not have a chance but you gotta go in like that and trade it otherwise what's the point you know yeah, exactly and kevin at one point peter mcguff is like well what if you get to three weeks out and you're looking in the mirror and you're kind of like things aren't things aren't really going right and and kevin interrupts him and goes won't happen not gonna happen it was not gonna happen and, and you know peter's like well that's not even in your mind he's like not even in my mind it won't happen he's like i'll be ready you know and he just says uh he's just very very confident he's looking big he's he was covered up in the interview but at one point he kind of pulled up and showed his like serratus and he's uh-huh. he's fucking ripped and he looks he looks dry and ripped already so kevin he says that the, he just gets bigger and leaner as, as as the show gets closer and he claims that he weighs two in the mid 250s already uh-huh. he, beginning of the year he was 212 or 210 so i don't know i mean i was really skeptical at first i'm thinking at 52 years old that's a giant hurdle but the more i hear that's him what, speak, that's what i said for him as i said before for him to go in and do it he must know he's gonna look okay and like i said he's got that mindset too where one train switches it on he goes all or nothing which is pretty much how you have to be and Kevin's always been that way when you watch his old training tapes he's always you know benching the five plates on an incline a week out from an Olympia and stuff like that so mm-hmm. barring it barring an injury I don't think you know see anything stopping him from going in the show you know touch what he doesn't get injured but you know I think he'll go in and give it his best and like I said if he can come in looking like he used to I, I usually see him being top six top three if he comes in you know one of his all-time best his body's had a good enough break so if he can bring all that muscle memory back he should do quite well yeah absolutely but uh, you yeah you should check that out it's over. Um, but, but I'm just hoping too that the judges will give a fair share, you know, because he's going to put a lot of bums on seats. He's going to get a lot of people interested in the show again. So I hope they're not just using him as a sideshow type thing that, okay, he's in there and then just fuck with him in the placings, you know what I yeah. mean? Because, you know, pretty much just use him. Okay, we've got this out of him. We've got the interest in the show. We've got more tickets sold. We've got more people logging on, watching, and this sort of stuff. But then, okay, Kevin, your day's gone. Thanks for coming. See you later type thing. So I just hope they don't do that. Yeah, I've actually been wondering if, if politically, if he's 
better or worse off than the other guys as a, as a comeback. So part of me thinks maybe he'll get the benefit of the doubt as a comeback guy from the 90s. And then, but part of me also thinks that maybe, like you said, he'll get screwed over. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know which way they'll, they'll go with it. But it, it's still very hard for me to imagine him like being in the first call out. It just seems so, it just seems like a Hollywood movie, like something that would never really happen. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Well, Kevin is a, he's he looks, a nutcase. If, if, he look, if he looks good enough and he's, you know, looking good, I can't see him. I'd love to do it just for the hype. Could you imagine if they said Phil Heath, Kai Green, Kevin Leverone, and, you know, Oof. Lex Road and something like that? You know, crowd will go nuts mm-hmm. to have, you know, Kevin did a center. Yep. You know, just uh, get the hype going, make it exciting. So, And you know, Kevin will get right next to Phil and give him a bump and shit. You know, he's. Oh, yeah. That's how yeah, he yeah. is. <laughs> and then it'll take five minutes to get into the pose. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> him and Flex Wheeler. Flex Wheeler would stand there and do a dance for five minutes oh, and yeah. then finally pose. So, so they ask Kevin for a side tricep. He'll do a side serratus, side chest, a side something and then he'll go down into the side truck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have to hurry him along sometimes. Kevin, hurry along. <laughs> Oh, but let's see. Okay, let's get into these questions here on your Instagram. Michael Horbeth, big fan of the badass new tats. I am too, by the way. That one of the Joker and Batman, that's cool. Oh, that's, that's painful at the moment. It must have got a slight infection. Actually, it looks like a mosaic painting right now because it's just totally peeling everywhere. But Ooh. the last three days, I haven't had an ankle. I can push my thumb in and have like an inch deep indent because it was all red and inflamed and swollen. So I was been limping. I haven't done legs for a week. I'm going to try to do legs tomorrow because the last four or five days, I've been I've just been able to barely walk on it. It's just been so tight and swollen. Is that the uh, worst? Uh, is that the worst tattoo story you have, or has it ever been uh, really bad? Uh, when I had the Punisher behind it on the same calf at the back, it got infected when I was overseas, and same thing. It just swelled up so Ugh. bad and got all hot and red. And uh, yeah, yeah, the last few last few days has been a bit painful walking on it. That's the worst. Those infections where it's just like throbbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that, actually my ankle and around there look like you know when you get the people who have that like diabetes and they get the big swollen ankles and. Yep. Legs look legs look red and scaly and purple and blue. That's how I looked down on my ankle. There. I'm thinking, oh god, they're going to have to amputate my fucking leg. Oh boy. I'm thinking, thanks, Batman and Joker. Thanks a lot. <laughs> he says, I was just wondering what you did when you were bulking in your 20s. How much did you eat when you when you lifted heavy or or I guess he's saying, did you lift heavy or light and focus on good quality reps in your 20s? I always I always lifted heavy and even when I lifted heavy, I always had good quality reps and good form. I never cheated or did the cheating movements type stuff and then eating wise I just ate whatever you know I enjoyed eating so if I wasn't getting ready for a contest I just whatever I saw and felt like I ate it you know I wouldn't go crazy every single day eating junk but there'll be days I clean add in junk but some days it was nothing but junk food and some days it was nothing but clean food so I just went by how I felt and like I said when I was younger I used to eat a lot more for sure you know I could eat, sit down eat big meals now I just sit down eat medium sized meals and then just pick a food now but yeah I always like I said I always went heavy but always with good form I never sacrificed going heavy and then just through form out the window so i was never one of those type of people yeah when you were i may have asked you this before but when you were a teenager did you get super overweight and heavy in the off season like you did later in your career or when did you start yeah. getting yeah oh i pretty much from because i did quite a few shows when i was like 13 14 15 but probably from 16 on i'd always get heavy in the off season get heavy and then dive back down so yeah from about 16 17 if i was eating i'd always just eat and get super heavy so what's the heaviest you would have got like before your last mr australia win oh god i wouldn't have ever been weighing myself back then so I wouldn't have a clue <laughs> it wasn't important I remember seeing pictures and my face was all puffy and moon face and that sort of yeah. thing so would have been would have been a, you know would have easily been 20 pounds 30 pounds over on this weight still okay um Essex Bowie 80 when do you think the mass monster era will end and bodybuilding will slowly return to the way it was oh god sooner hope, rather than later I hope but mm-hmm. it's hard to say because you know like I said I've heard it before when they said they were gonna stop rewarding the guys who come in bloated but then they did and then Dexter the one and then they went back to the guys with the bloated stomachs and looking all blocky placing high winning shows again so it's hard to say I'm all for bass monsters you know you know, I love freaky looking bodybuilders and guys that have all the mass but like I said I was used to it back in the day when even NASA for a huge guy had a smaller waist Paul Dillette had a tiny waist and was a mass monster so you know I, I like the mass monsters that still have good symmetry to them not just coming in looking like huge power lifters mm-hmm. in rip condition so I just wish that would go back to that but as long as the judges keep rewarding the guys coming in fat and blocky they're going to keep coming in fat and lucky sadly Nasser early in his career I thought looked great uh, tight oh, little that waist 90, that 90, 97 Olympia I, I, I would have 
seen him beat Dorian that one. Mm-hmm. He got second to Dorian. He was easily like three gear just as much as Dorian. A tiny the Dorian's waist that year was blown out and then his bicep torn and NASA was spot on that year. If you look at pictures from the ninety seven Olympia where him and Dorian and standing side by side, he could have easily have won that. Mm-hmm. From the front, he he blows him off the stage. I mean Dorian mm-hmm. may have been a little bit better from the back, but I mean come on. It's it, from the front, Nasser was just like cement. Those mm-hmm. abs, those his abs were crazy. He had that crazy that's like the thing, that's the thing they always say from the back, but yeah, you know, like you said, you got the front, you got side on shots, you got all these yep. other stuff. And you know, from the back, Nasser's calves, legs, and hammies, okay, Dorian might have had him on the rear lat spread, but yeah, that's one pose. What about all the other poses? So, you know, it's crazy that people always say that's one from the back when, okay, you can have a great back, but then all the other body parts are shit, so you deserve to win. Come on. <laughs> right. Maybe the men, or this new classic physique thing will, tr- will bring it back a little bit, but who, who knows? I don't, I don't know. But it's sad, it's sad when they're calling the classic physique. Classic physique, pretty much what bodybuilding was in the 80s and 90s and that sort of thing. It was guys who even had mass who still had sym- symmetry to them. You know, they still had nice physiques, but yet they had mass. So I don't know why they had to make a whole classic physique class when they should have just been taken back to what bodybuilding should be. It should be just fucking bodybuilding. That's what it was, you know? So. Right, exactly. This guy, man without fear. He said, <laughs> oh man, I just watched your video on, K- he calls him Kelly gay for pay muscle. Uh, is that what you <laughs> said or something? Because he said, he said, now I'm your fan, not only because of your arms. <laughs> I don't know, what's the Cali, Cali muscle? That would have to be going back a bit, wouldn't it? When I was asked questions about him on teams, wasn't it? Was oh, a while ago? oh, I figured this guy saw a new one, but maybe he's talking about an no, old one, yeah. There hasn't been nothing, been nothing new on Cali muscle. Let's see, well, apparently nothing people like when you, when you talk about Cali muscle. <laughs> I think the guy's a clown, honestly, but... Does he, has he competed before? Yeah, he has. He's uh he's on national level shows, but he's he's not good. He's got a he's got a big kind of mutated looking upper body with tiny little skinny legs. So Callie was the one that got out of jail, wasn't he? he had the book. Yes. Yes. That's it, yeah. So they all all these people sort of blend into one sometimes. It's like it's just mm-hmm. can't yeah, keep it. up. <laughs> this guy is uh looks like a men's physique guy. His name is Pop Tart Gaines. How early along oh. in life did you start using performance enhancing drugs? And if they knew, how did your family react? to your choice. Uh, like I said, 19 is when I started using and, you know, my mum knew at that stage I was going to use because I spoke to her about it and, you know, she didn't agree with it, but she knew it was my decision and my choice, so she just said as long as I did it safely and tried to do it as safely as I could, you know, because back then you think you know what you're doing, but, you know, is anything really safe for sure? So, you just try and do the best you can, as safe as you can, and like I said, she one day was walking past the room when I was having a shot and she just sort of looked at me and shook her head and kept walking, so just like that. <laughs> that sort of rolled the eyes, shake the head and kept walking, but, yeah, she knew it was one of those things that was in the sport. But, you know, she didn't agree with it, but she knew it was there, so she knew I was going to do it. So she just, we say she supported me, but she just, you know, as long as I was doing it as safely as I could, she was, you know, I said, I don't want to say she would agree with it, but she knew it was part of the sport, so she just knew it was there. Did your mom compete, like, when you were younger, or did she just do that one show with you? No, she competed when I was, like, 17, and she was 36, or was she 38, one of those at the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, yeah, she, she competed that show with me, but then she competed a few times by herself, like, in her own weight class and that and won a few of them and got second at a couple and stuff like that. So she competed for about two, maybe three years, and that was it. Okay. This guy... She got she got smart and said, fuck this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your mom was ripped. The, that video of your, your couples, she was ripped. Mm-hmm. I think uh, she was only weighing. I think she was weighing like 52 kilos or something. Yeah, she's very small, very petite, but she was in crazy mm-hmm. conditioning. She must have suffered. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember my sister was eating the chocolate once, and I saw my mum had her up against the wall with a hand around the throat. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, I guess. No, because my mum's like me. She loves food and loves desserts and stuff. Mm-hmm. So when, that's why I never thought she would compete, because when she said if I get in shape, because she was a little bit heavier and stuff, I'm like, yeah, 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 if you get in shape, sure, I'll do it. And I'm thinking she's never going to stop eating because she likes food, and then she got in shape. I'm like, oh, fuck, now I've got to do the couples with my mum. <laughs> yeah, my, my mum's in the process of doing that. She said the same thing, and now she She's getting better and better every every are you week. Go, are you going to do the couples with your mom? I don't know. I may, I need to get my ass in gear. I just had some kielbasa and cheese, so I don't know. <laughs> Is that what you was cooking when? Yes. <laughs> kielbasa with some some uh, cheese and. Was it low fat cheese? Nah, it's like uh, parmesan and cheddar. I fucking low fat. <laughs> 
Parmesan. I eat, I, like, I eat a high fat diet usually. I usually limit the carbs more than the fat, but different than you did. Do you like do you like do you like Parmesan cheese? Smells like vomit. I love Parmesan cheese. Yeah, uh, smells like someone threw up. <laughs> I eat more. I eat, I eat tons of that. Too much of it, but I do like it. Is it is it popular over there? No. No, you might just see it at some Italian restaurants and then on right. tables or stuff like that. But I don't know, really see most people eat. Jade always gets that. Um, what's that cheese? It's got the white on the outside. Um, Comes in. Uh, she always has that on like. Like, you know, cracker biscuits and stuff like that. So I eat some of that one. I don't know. I'm not. There's so many cheeses. I don't even know. Cabanossi or who knows what the fuck. <laughs> I just know it's got the white stuff on the outside and the nice yellow cheese in the middle. It could be. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. I like going to the cheese section in the grocery store. I like, though, I like, at... I like fucking craft singles on toast. <laughs> there you go. Craft. That Velveeta shit's just gross. I just like getting the old fucking make some toast, butter it with cheese on, then put it in the microwave for 20 seconds and melt it, then eat it. Yeah. There you go. That's a stable, a stable food of mine when I was younger. Melted cheese on toast. Me too. I did that same. I I ate that shit too. <laughs> Or I used to like getting the old, you know, the old Breville sandwich makers and putting the old cream corn and cheese and making the toasted sandwich. I like sharp cheeses. Those are my favorite. Sharp cheeses and like the hard cheeses, like Parm and Asiago, like the those hard aged cheeses I think are so good, but they're expensive. Do you like, do you like blue cheese? It's all right. Depends. It depends on... Fucking, fucking gross. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you eat with the blue cheese? A fucking. Blue I, I, I'm not a I, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of blue cheese. It's not my favorite, but I don't I don't not like it. But I'll have do it. You on. Have it do what you have it on your fucking bread with mold on it. That moldy cheese. That's the yeah. thing. People will throw people people will fucking if they fucking get their bread out of their bread bin or whatever, and it's got mold on, they toss the shit out, but they'll shove fucking moldy cheese <laughs> down their throat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who, who knows? But, yeah, on the list of cheeses, blue cheese is as low on the list. I'm not really. Yeah, not or blue vein. Fan. Blue vein meat. I wouldn't go eating that either. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is kind of a good question for this topic. Or what we're talking about this guy, Henry Mumford, asks Victoria Bitter or XXXX. No, I don't like beer. <laughs> yeah, I fucking uh, hate people, beer. Oh, now people, I think back in the old days, you know, it was always you know the four X beer. That's from Queensland where I used to do up there, but it was pretty popular. People like that, but VB seems to be the one that sponsors most sporting events here, Victoria Bitter and stuff. But no, I just it. can't. Yeah, funny that, huh? And they've ordered. They actually stopped cigarette advertising at sporting events in Australia, but now they have beer everywhere, and players always talk about after the game, what are you going to do? I'm going to go get drunk and stuff, and they have beer advertising, and alcohol is one of the biggest causes of death here, with kids drinking and driving it, and the fucking yep. fight drinking, but that's okay, who gives a shit? But nah, beer's just fucking terrible. I remember when I was young, I'd always hear people, you know, say, oh, I can't wait to get off work and have a nice cold beer and this and that, so I'm thinking, oh, it must be good, like, you know, I don't mind having a cold Coke and a cold Fanta or something, you know, so I'm thinking, this beer yeah. must be good, like, I had a taste one day. I'm thinking, who the fuck can drink that shit? And then my stepfather used to make homemade stout and brew his own at home. And oh, I remember, the, I remember the smell of that shit would make me feel sick. And it was that black. I mean, oh god! I think a couple of glasses, and he was fucking five shades to the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget one time. My dad always, my dad drank well, what, beer. What the, what the fuck does that even mean? Five shades of the wind, or whatever they say. It's like that just came out of nowhere, didn't it? That old saying. But how does that mean you're fucking drunk? I think we here. It's, it's uh, I don't even know. I, it's a similar saying, but I have no idea what that means. There's got to be a meaning. <laughs> exactly. The my dad always drank beer at every every dinner and everything. And if we ever worked outside or or when we always worked outside, like in the summer and shit, he'd always first thing he'd do would grab a cold beer. I remember I'd watch him drink it, and after he'd be like. Ah, you know, like he, I know. it seems so good. So one time, my buddy Ray like those, and I, like those solo, solo main commercials. Yeah. So my buddy Ray and I, we we stole a bat blue from the stole. We took it from the the refrigerator. We went out. We went Man, back you out. St- in the, you stole it. We yeah, we stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. We went out to the to the backyard. Or not the backyard, but back in the woods because we lived in the country. And we sat there and we 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 tried to drink it. And I was like, I remember saying, "Is this bad? Did I get a rotten one?" I'm like, "What the fuck? Is this thing." <laughs> It's fucking take, terrible. Take it back and get another one. <laughs> I literally thought like this one must be rotten because it smells rotten and it tastes mm-hmm. even more rotten. It just is so bad. And it, to this day, I'm 29 years old and I can't drink. Uh, if I'm already drunk, no. I still can't drink beer. Even if you go into a place sometimes where it's beer, and I remember once at one of the first nightclubs I went into, just that smell of stale beer in the carpet and shit. I'm like, fuck, this place stinks. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. gross. I don't, I don't get it. People love that shit. Oh yeah, they spend over here a case of beer is like anywhere like 41, 48 dollars for a ca- case of beer. I think this 
it's 12 beers, 48 bucks. Now you figure the the cigarettes cigarettes on top of that. So, you know, you could be spending a couple of hundred a weekend on smoking and beers, so, yeah, but can't feed the kids. <laughs> I know, it's nuts. I don't. I have friends that'll sit there and drink 30 cans of beer in one night. Just, just, it, it, maybe not 30. Oh, well, yeah, like 30. It's just, I, I, can't, I can't understand that people can do that because I always have to try and equate that to be sitting there and drinking cans of Coke. I'm thinking, I couldn't drink, I could drink two, maybe three cans of Coke. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, fuck, my guts are full from the gas. I'm thinking, how do these guys just sit there and go, my uncle could do it. He'd go through a bottle or cans of beer one after another. I'm thinking, they ain't get fucking four. <laughs> exactly. I don't understand. I think the same thing. I'm like, if I was drinking any beverage, I mean, I can drink mm-hmm. some Diet Coke. I-, I could probably drink in one night if I'm eating some salty food. I could probably drink 10 cans of Diet Coke if I wanted to, but they drink 20, 25 cans of beer. It's uh, it's craziness. I don't know how they do yeah. it. And they just keep piling up. <laughs> Ugh. No Nothing wonder people worse. are so sick. Not wrong. Okay, this guy will... will so in answer, in, in answer to that guy's question, none of them at all don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> is the, I'll, is the drink, quad, I'll drink... I'll drink Foster. <laughs> is the Australian for beer? Is the exactly. is the Quad X one the most interesting man in the world one? Uh, no, 4X, not 1X, 4X. 4X, yeah, 4X, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, Triple X. <laughs> I was going to say Triple X, but there's four of them, so. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think it's the one with the interesting man in the world commercials, but. Is it? I haven't seen that commercial. Oh, no? Huh. No, it might be an American thing where they made for America, is it? Yeah, yeah. Here, Aussies would go, oh, what a fucking dumb commercial. <laughs> he says, uh, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, it's 4X or whatever. Uh, but maybe it's would, not. Would maybe it's, I could be wrong. I don't know anything about beer, so. Do they still have the Foster's commercials over there or not? Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, not not. I, I remember, I remember. It used to have the shark of the Australian for Guppy or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. All oh, those funny ones. We still have Outback Steakhouse. Hey, that's good. We don't, we don't. I think I've only ever seen one Outback Steakhouse here in Australia. <laughs> we don't really haven't. at the. Uh, that's those... why I like to bring. I think I think whatever you don't have here does good over there. That's why I always figured in Australia I like to have a good American diner, whether it be like Ruby's or any any type of good old fashioned American diner here would probably be really well because hmm. it's different. You know, we don't have them here compared to America has them and people enjoy them over there. But yet, you know, people love Outback Steakhouse over there because it's different. If we had Outback Steakhouse here, people go, yeah. Whereas we have Lone Star Steakhouse here and it does quite well. So Right. We have a whole bunch of them. We have Longhorn and and uh, Outback. There's there's uh, Smoky Bones. There's all kinds of steakhouses, but I'm not really a big fan of those places. Trap Horn. Let's see. Will Yard? Will, I don't know how to sell this person. They'll know who they are. Is it possible to get a good no. size like Lee at 17 without taking steroids, just protein and supplements? My diet is pretty much food pyramid, and I am doing high volume training. Cheers. Well, it is if you got the right genetic. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. like, it's like anything. If, like, I never took drugs and I got a good physique at 17. So if, if you've got the good genetics and you train hard and eat properly and you get the rest in, you're not out partying, sure. But even then, okay, if we take the genetics out a little bit, say you have so so. You know, at that age with your hormones starting to kick in full swing and that at 17, you know, if you just train consistently and train properly with good weights, as heavy as you can, but with good form, get your meals in, get your rest in and stuff like that, have your supplements space like proteins, aminos and stuff like that. I still think you could build a good physique compared to someone who wasn't, so I can't see why you wouldn't. You it's know, funny. Said your, your hormones at that age are good. The very next comment he if says. Like, if, if you like Jeff, you know, other people can check the truth out The very next comment he says, I know Lee was natural at the time, I just have shit just genetic so i clicked on his profile there's two pictures <laughs> yeah, but, and, that, and one of them is a picture of a cookie so i don't know maybe he's not on the right track <laughs> well even you know with shit genetics like i said before i've seen some guys that wouldn't have shit genetics but they don't have the best in the world but yet if they got it you know mentally and got the drive and the heart to do it they can do it over someone who has like i said god gives genetics and they just become lazy fucks and don't train hard and just wasted so yeah, you, know, you know it's good to have the genetics but even if you didn't have the best genetics i wouldn't let that you know hold you back and stop you just give it everything you can and see what happens mm-hmm. jeff's yeah. still trying and look yeah, you know he's still patching his head against the wall. Oh, every day. <laughs> you got to you got to give the you got to give Jason Jehovah a for confidence, don't you? Mm-hmm. Man, I was freaky. I was fucking huge. <laughs> I've never spoke like that about myself. I, I'm lacking the confidence. <laughs> I know Lee, you got to you take a page out of Jason Jehovah's book. I know. I need to you take a few pills. I need to take a few pills out of his drawer. <laughs> <laughs> you end up back in the back in the <laughs> hospital with the old ladies drawing pictures, painting, yep. doing coloring in. <laughs> 
Michael. <laughs> okay, why doesn't Lee compete in the NSL, or is he staying off the competition stage? Uh, just due to injury. If, you know, if my injury, if like after the universe and that sort of thing, if I never had this neck operation and the nerve damage and stuff, I, would, I probably would have been in the NSL by now and competed in the show payoff. My neck wasn't fucked up with the arm still, so, you know, I'm all hoping that, you know, it all comes good again, if it comes good, but let's live in hope that it will. If it all comes good, I'll end up dieting down again one time. I'll see, okay, if there's like a NABA world on or an NSL show around the same time, I won't commit to it, but I'll just be like, okay, well, let me set my sights on this. I'll diet and see how I look, and if I think, okay, Lee, you look as good as you did at the universe, but like I've said before, I'm not going to diet down and go, oh, fuck, you're like a, you know, a shell of your former self. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go do an Arnold or Franco and make it come back and go, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you just have Boston Lloyd train you. That'll get you pumped up. Oh, on the supplement side, I'll be right, won't I? Mm-hmm. And you died right after I, the show. I couldn't I couldn't imagine <laughs> putting that shit everywhere like that, that many need. I'd be like, fuck. Oh, why shit. would you? What's the point? Why would you even? Uh, I, couldn't, I, I would quit like before I, said, I would do that. I'd rather be a fat mess. It's like I said, even when I used Stanisol, I used to do that every second day or third day. It's like, I hated doing that. That's why I eventually just went, you know what, I'm going to have it every fifth day or so and stuff like that. But like I said, off season, having one needle a week, that was bad enough. When I knew fucking that was shot day, I'd start fucking sweating and getting all clammy and shit because I hate doing it. And then I got to do that. My friends can just get the needle and go, boom, straight in like Boston does. Boom. I got to do that. You know, you start moving your hand back and forth like a dart. One, two. No, no, hold on. Let's do it again. One, two. No, no, hold on. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it yeah. Me, it takes me like a fucking minute. Then when I get in, I don't go whack and push it straight in. I just hit it so the tip goes in. And then I push it in slow. I'm like, oh, 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 I can feel that going in. I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking process if I care to have a shot. Jesus. <laughs> That's why I enjoy not having them. So I couldn't, could not imagine having two to three or four a day every fucking day. Fuck that. You're lying. You're lying. I know, I know. I'm, I'm laying on a fucking bed right now. There's no, nothing no, worse no. than guys like Lee Priest saying they're on low doses. He's blown up. You know, those, you know those Indians that lay on those bed of nails? I've actually got a bed made out of syringes yes. like that. So when I, when I lay on it, it just injects as my body weight pushes down. <laughs> that reminds me, have you ever, did you ever see the show Wild Boys? No, you told me about it. It's like similar to the house I think, was it? Is that it? No, 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 no. The, you reminded me of it because of the bed of nails thing. Wild Boys, you know the show Jackass? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember Wild Boys, yeah. Wasn't that like the spin-off from that guy was on it? Yeah, it was uh, uh, Steve Glover, who was Steve-O, and then uh, Chris Pontius went around to like, they went to Australia, they went all over the place, all over the world to, to let in like... Uh, they would let painful insects bite them. They would uh, swim with sharks and alligators. <laughs> and they just did a bunch of like crazy shit that had to do with nature and animals. I thought I thought it was a fun. I didn't like Jackass so much, but Wild Boys was awesome. They would do. They swimming, would ride. Swimming, swimming ride. With alligators or crocodiles could be taking your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of the stuff like there was one where they're they're on a boat and they see a, a, they're, they're, there's great whites around the boat. They're probably in Australia and the great white comes right under the boat and they both jump right on top of it. <clears throat> like, not literally <laughs> on top of it, but it's probably only five feet under the water, you know? It, it's just, they, they're just, they're nutcases, but it was a, they put the, uh, they put like krill or whatever in their in their underwear and swam with a whale shark <laughs> and the whale shark's trying to eat their fucking underwear and shit. It's, they think they, they, they're, uh, those, those, those whale sharks have got pretty big mouths. They'll fucking suck you in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the it was a cool show because it was like these two guys doing outrageous shit, but at the same time there was some like educational animal stuff too. So he because they went on a they went on a uh, a walkabout or whatever they call it the mm-hmm. in Australia. Australia and they like he put a one of those big centipedes you guys have he put it, he put one of those down his ass crack. Uh, <laughs> they they found a they found a bed of fire ants and they one of the things apparently they do on a walkabout is they'll get on the bed of fire fire ants and stomp on them mm-hmm. and just stand there and let them bite them so they did that and shit it's just stuff like that but that sounds like fun <laughs> yeah but uh that kid that or that kid he's like crew. 40s now the medi- medi- medical crew medical crew must have been standing by <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure they probably had M16s and shit too. Mm. Okay. I always thought that about Steve Irwin. Like, I wonder if there's a guy sitting there with a with an M16 in case something turns on. Well, so the sad, so sad, the sad thing about Steve was, you know, he was just filming that. And like I said, with the stingrays and those type of animals, you know, their eyes can't really see behind. They just go by vibrations and stuff. And normally with like stingrays and stuff, when predators go to get them, they always approach from behind. So he's filming coming up from behind. Stingray thinks shit, you know, he can't make out a human. He thinks probably some shark or something. 
so he shoots the barb out, goes through his chest and into his heart area. The sad thing is, though, removing the barb is what killed him because once he removed the barb and that, it sort of bled out. Whereas if they had have left the barb in there, he probably, you know, they said that he would have actually been able to be taken to the hospital and saved if it was left in. But I guess, you know, the first thing you do out of reaction is you go rip it out. So when he ripped it out, mm-hmm. is what caused him to bleed to death, sadly. So. Yeah. Steve Irwin was, uh, that guy was a badass of, of the highest order. He would just, mm-hmm. I, I saw a video of him one time. I've seen, a, when I was a kid, I loved, I loved Steve Irwin. There was a video of him. He's holding this snake and he's talking to the camera and the thing whacks him in the face so hard. Yeah. It bites and he's bleeding down his face and he's like, doesn't break a smile. Doesn't, he doesn't even stop talking. He's like, I've just taken a shot to the face here, yeah, but, uh, and he, and it's just the stuff. And he, uh, she's probably, she's, he's probably like, she didn't mean it. She's a beautiful snake. Exactly. <laughs> He's just a little flustered here, and then like I got, I got another two minutes of talk time before the poison kicks in. So <laughs> exact that, and he, he's like handling, free handling black mambas and stuff. It's just mm-hmm. the guy was I incredible. One, I remember one. It's like a mamba, but it's some other black snake. It's one of the most poisonous in the world. And the same thing. It's on the ground, and he's laying on his stomach right up to it. Like he's almost face to face, and he's like, "Look at her, isn't she gorgeous? What a beautiful creature!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, or like he'll talk, he'll yeah. talk like uh, that. I just that was such a good show he's just uh he'll just be like she knows she she knows what she can do to me look at her she knows <laughs> she knows with one bite she could kill me but she's not gonna touch me she's just as interested in me as i am in her we're yeah. just laying here admiring each other's beauty <laughs> yep yep guys guy was crazy uh <laughs> the other guy that's really a badass is uh i don't know if you've ever heard of him but manny peg manny yeah. Pueg or manny peg there's a documentary on him called uh ultimate predator and it's it's uh he's He's more... He's not as intelligent, I would say, as Steve Irwin, but he's more crazy. This guy is... Like he would go into the into the woods and approach fucking bears and shit. Just he, he was he was he was he was a complete nutcase. But uh, what about saying that Adamborough? What's his name? Adamborough. I can't hear you. You know Adamborough? No, I don't know who that is. Adamborough. He goes on and does those animal shows. You know, he's got that real old voice. He goes all around the world. It's not rich out there. No, David Adamborough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. He does, like, the, the planet Earth shit. Yeah, yeah, well, those type of animal shows yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah he's like good. Nine, 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 nine. There's one on the other night called The Hunt. He has all different ones on where he's this fucking polar bear in the middle of summer because the ice has melted and it's fucking like climbing up the cliffs to get the birds and the eggs on this cliff. This fucking <laughs> polar bear. You know, how the fuck's the cunt going to get down there? He's fucking like on this cliff and the rocks are falling down and he's just climbing up. Yeah. There. I think, Jesus... Hmm. It's like uh, last night I couldn't sleep, and I so I watched two different. I thought of you because I watched two different uh, Bigfoot documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> what, the Bigfoot boys or just documentaries on Bigfoot? Just, just like legit documentaries like these, uh, because there's a few doctors that study Bigfoot and just uh-huh. listen to them talk about it. It's pretty, it's pretty intriguing. I like, I like, I like those. It's Me like too. And then, it shows you, and then it will show you the vast forest and wilderness. So you got to think, you know, there's some places that people have never been to. There's got to be shit out there. It's just like the mm-hmm. ocean. So some oceans are so deep, you don't know what the fuck's down there. So. <clears throat> people say it's impossible, but if you think about it, let's say there's only like 1,500 of them in the world. Uh-huh. What if there's only a few? You. And what if they're they're in between humans and and gorillas and intelligence? So there's there's uh-huh. if they're significantly smarter than a gorilla, they would be able to they would have way better sight than us, way better hearing than us, way better smell oh, yeah. than us. We would never they're, be able to get close to them. There's no that, way. I mean, if they've been they've been around that long, they they'd know how to hide from us. Yeah, still, they can hide like their that. tracks and their dead bodies and stuff uh, easily if they're that still, smart. We're still discovering today. There's new species of fish being discovered. There's still new species of animals being discovered in the Amazon so who's mm-hmm. to say there's not fucking anything yet to say you know these people just kind of say nah they don't exist it's like you know leave an open mind the same as you oppose you can't just say there's nothing out there the universe and the galaxies and that is that's that go on and on there's so fucking many of them that uh-huh. for you to say there's definitely nothing out there apart from us it's just stupid so you gotta have an open mind when it comes to all that shit you just can't say no there isn't you know unless you believe in the bible that's only us only us that's it <laughs> but I, I know I just don't I don't I don't 
I don't believe that there's a that there's Bigfoot, but I don't not believe it necessarily either. If I had to bet money, I'd say no. But there is a way that it could be real, just because mostly because of their yeah, intelligence and how few there are. You go fucking throw Dave Palumbo out in the forest in a fur coat, and you know <laughs> you're a belief. You're a believer. <laughs> or fucking Patrick Ewing or some shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Jesus. This guy, I think we already got this question. Golden Aesthetics, what is your opinion on a Diana Ball only cycle? Uh, I don't think that's a question. I think we just mentioned oh, That's fine. Yeah, very fine. I think we both mentioned that we've we yeah. both done it at some stage. Yeah, that's one of the greatest Diana things. Ball, it it yeah. worked fine. I, I, it depends on the if person. It, if it's real. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's and you'll be, know. It's got to be real. Tiny ball too. Yeah, yeah if you don't feel watch, different. You know, sugar, sugar pills. <laughs> right. If you don't feel different in a week, it's not real. Or because Diana Ball is, you, you're, 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 you'll feel everything will feel different. Your mindset will feel different. You'll be fuller. You'll be. It's just there's just you'll know if it's real. And uh, he says dosage. I don't know. I took like I've never taken more than twenty milligrams a day, but I know some of these clowns take like a hundred. <laughs> I know. Like Did you stupid. use D ball? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Oh, oh. I mean the pills though. I know. I know it's over here. I came out a long time ago. I think people see that they did come out with injectable Diana ball, but I never tried that. I just always just stuck to the tablet. Um, I think it was Greg Valentino who said injectable D ball was like the greatest thing in the world, but I've I've never. Is it? No, I never tried it. How what dosages did you use of the Diana ball? Only 40, 50 milligrams a day. I never yeah. went over that. If they were ten milligram tablets, four to five a day. See, I took two ten milligram tablets a day and in four weeks i gained probably five pounds but i got harder pretty considerably harder more i gained weight got way more vascular harder abs were more clear and i didn't get bloated i didn't get any of that shit so i guess i guess it depends if you're like a chubby guy whoever this is then you might not want to take diana ball but i think i think think it too like i said before it also comes down to you eating what you're eating at the time yeah i ate clean right yeah i've had friends that have taken diana ball like you said eating clean and i've used them for contests before and been fine but then like i said off season i've known people take diana ball and shit and they're eating everything under the sun they're like fuck these diana ball make you hold a bit of fluid I'm like, yeah exactly know, i would i wouldn't be the fucking kentucky and the leader of ice cream you're having every night now, would it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the old cell tech people were like oh that creatine makes you bloated it's like you're eating 100 grams of sugar extra with that shitty product that's why you're bloated it's not the mm. creatine fuck's sake <laughs> stupid people <laughs> All right, this guy, your it's Sarav. I don't know who he is. Wait, is he a? He says TV and radio event host, comedian, actor, translator, martial artist, fitness athlete, gentleman. Jesus. He looks like who the most it? interesting man in the world. Who was it? David Hasselhoff. I don't know his actual name, but his uh oh, Yori. Yori. I can't say this dude's last name. He's not. He sounds Russian. Yeah, it's <laughs> his his last name is T S A R E V. Sarav. I don't I don't really know, but maybe he can. But he says, "Hi Lee, I really appreciate and love your videos on YouTube. Some years ago, I broke my right shoulder during arm wrestling ooh, and had some nasty bone surgeries. Now I'm back to sort, but I've got." Uh, a non-symmetrical body, especially my right pec pec. What would you suggest to do for my chest training to gain more mass on my right pec? Thanks for your advice. That's a good question. Just on the, <laughs> just on the right. <laughs> Apparently, his right pec is atrophied from an old shoulder injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can always try. I guess you can do one arm dumbbells because I've had to. I've had to do one arm dumbbells before just because of my arm and how it is now and crossovers and stuff. So, but I wouldn't just you know put put it aside and just train one side. Yeah, it'll come back if it, if you had it before and here you an injury, it'll come back again. Just will take time and that's uh, you know just give it time. The one thing that I think would be good is when so if uh, if you have a this guy has a a hammer strength press at his at his gym that has two separate working they don't have to be separate but it's better if they're separate working uh arms like a like an incline hammer strength if you get on that machine sideways so in other words let's say it's your right pack if it's your right pack get on the hammer strength machine come totally sideways facing right so your left shoulder is facing straight out from the machine and then press with your right your right pack or arm i guess press across your body with the with the um 
hammer strength machine. That's one of the best chest exercises I've ever done, and it isolates each pec independently. So I would try that. Just get on the get on the hammer strength press machine uh-huh. sideways. Yeah, any, any machines like that where you can have the independent movement are pretty good. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of different machines you can use where I said some are connected, but the ones that are ISO type you can do them are pretty good. I remember the old lay down hammer strength one. It's just like a flat bench, but maybe on a slight line. It was it was really good and stuff like that. We can just do one do one at a time. Yep. Um, let's see this guy Sue ninety seven. These people with their fucking Sue J <laughs> Sue Sue J. That's how my ignorant American ass. Oh, he's a Buddhist. A Buddhist. A Buddhist. Relentless positivity. Good. That's a good thing. Um. <coughs> Hope your arm is getting better, Lee. My question is, did you have a favorite food? Thank you, it's not. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> did you have a favorite food for carving up? Before I never this? carved up. Oh, you didn't? I did, no, I never carved up, so no, I didn't. No. Okay. I, well, I got rid of it. Even just before shows, I just ate the same as I was eating. Potato, rice, stuff like that. But no, I never did any big carb ups or had a favorite thing that I would eat. Before Sean Ray said that. he didn't do any type of carb up either. He went on stage hungry. Yep, I was always hungry. I was always too scared if I ate too much. I'd just move out and stuff. So I pretty much just ate what I was normally eating whatever i was dieting on i just ate that i might have had a little bit more say i was having say 50 grams of rice in a meal i might go to 70 grams yeah so i just increased the fraction i never went crazy so no i've seen too many people fuck up diets carving up carving up looking great then going i gotta carve up and then they just blow it out and lose everything yeah yeah, I think more people should go on stage hungry because obviously you and you and Sean were the two of the greatest physiques ever, and you never ever ever had any distension issues at all. And you have two of the smallest waists in the game, so I, I think you can tell some guys load up so heavily, and they just end up. You ju- you can just tell, like, dude, how much did you eat backstage? You look like a bloated oh, yeah. mess. Right. And then they come out too smooth, and their stomach explodes like they just sat down to a big buffet. It was like yeah, ridiculous. and they get they they they, they change they get hard during the pre judging, then they start getting soft, then they harden up again. Mm-hmm. It's like that shouldn't be happening. What's going on with you? It's because you got you know, seventeen one, cheeseburgers. One, they, in they, some just start smoothing out. They start smoothing out, and it looks like a truckload of water starts pouring. Yep, out. yep. I mean that has to be from eating a bunch of food right before you get on stage. I don't know what else would uh mm-hmm. what else would account for that. So oh, well, that's all the questions. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, no, wasn't go, very many go, questions because we had Jason I'll, on, but I'll go and enjoy the Queen's birthday celebrations a month after two after her birthday. Nice, it's like Christmas. <laughs> so, that was a good show. We might have another, we got to get some more guests on. Uh, exactly. We tried to get Lonnie Teeper, but that's a no go. Um, no, yeah. although he would like to be on. We have, uh, Tom Plants would be great. Oh, we watched, I yeah, watched I that. Just saw, I just saw Tom was it yesterday or something. I saw on Instagram, he just posted something. So, an interview? My, no, just a photo or something. Someone would be trying to get a hold of him through instagram yeah yeah if, it, if it's the real tom flats i'm hoping right <laughs> it seems to be maybe i watched that entire video the tom flats secret of the pros video oh uh, yeah you can tell you can pretty much tell who people are can't you by their body oh of course especially <laughs> delat delat they show his face and you can see his goatee and shit you know it's delat and, and, and you can tell by the way he wheezes when he talks yeah, yeah of <laughs> course and uh the, the, and the only one that was kind of tough was uh cormier was a little tough and then who was the other white dude uh not Matarazzo. Dennis Newman. Dennis Newman, I didn't know because I'm not that familiar uh-huh. with Dennis Newman, anyways. But the, but uh, Ronnie <laughs> Coleman was totally obvious, and so was Paul Dillette. But they, it was a uh, it was a uh, I was I was I was obvious. Yes, you were. <laughs> you were massive too in that video. Holy shit! What year was that? I can't remember. It must have been. It could have been too long ago. Mid early early two thousand. Right, probably yeah, right around two thousand. Because Ronnie was gigantic as well. Probably, probably around. I would have been around. I'm guessing around 2004, five, around there. Yeah, this, uh, it's a very good video. If anyone wants to, you just got to YouTube Tom Platt's Secrets. If you, if you YouTube Tom Platt's Secrets, you'll get this, it's, it's like seven hours of footage of Tom Platt's interviewing the pros about their drug use and diet stuff. It's, it's good. It's, uh, I watched the whole thing pretty much. And, uh, people watch it again. They're all live. Yeah, they're, they're what are you gonna do? But uh, they're lying. Especially Lee, because uh, I, I think Tom was even surprised with what you were saying. He's like, "Oh wow, so uh, you don't use that much at all?" And you're like, "Nope, not really." <laughs> I didn't even tell him to. He just he had to use all of that back in the day. Yeah, but he trained like a like a horse, you know. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way he did it, and it's a uh, it's a different look when you get to. 
if you're 250 shredded from hard work and you're 250 shredded from a bunch of drugs and tricks, it's a different look. It's uh, oh, yeah, totally, totally there's a diff, uh, you know, one looks like a uh, very impressive human, the other one looks like a lab experiment. So, <laughs> but uh, one looks like Lee Priest, one looks like Boston Lloyd. You yeah, exactly. Which one, you pick one which one's human. <laughs> <laughs> yep. None of you fuckers. <laughs> yep. I mean, if you compare uh, even Phil Heath right now to like Flex Wheeler early yeah. in his career, it's, it's a totally different. They might be similar sizes in similar conditioning, but Phil looks like a circus they, freak. They, 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 they sometimes put that picture of Flex and him side by side, and they said Flex's muscles are so much more round and the tiny waist that he just looks that much overall impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His joints were way smaller. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And he just looked. Uh, you look at Phil and you're like, oh, holy shit. And you look at Flex and you're like, wow, I would love to look like that. You know, it's just a whole different, uh, it's a, and like yourself and Sean Ray, you have a look that's like, uh, desirable. It doesn't, you don't, nobody would look at that and say, oh, gross. But the guys now are just, they're not, they're not as, uh, they don't look right. You guys look like how you should look if you train a lot and eat a lot and so on. The guys now just look like something's, they're doing something that's supernatural and it, it's, it's not a good look. Un- unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, of course. I mean, nobody in the top five now looks anything like you or Sean or Flex. Even Dexter is w- kind of wide-waisted now for his frame and, and, and everything else, so I don't know. I, I hope. That's stupid. There's no way to, there's no way to stop it, because you'd have to, you'd have to limit drug use or something, which is not going to happen, so. <laughs> it's, maybe classic physique is the last saving grace, but who, who knows? Exactly. Women's bodybuilding's gone by the wayside now, so. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, on that note, I'm yawning. On that here. note, goodbye. <laughs> we will be back later in the month, maybe with another guest, maybe not. Doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. With Lee Priest, there's no need for a guest. Exactly. I can be. I have a lot of personalities. Yep. <laughs> the, the the greatest liar in uh, IFBB history. Exactly. Sticks to his guns the whole time. Exactly. That's right. Um, go to ironmagazine.com. Check out the new articles and stuff over there. Like Lee and I were just talking about the comeback article I wrote. I kind of do a review of all the big comebacks in, in bodybuilding history, um, including Lee's. Go to Iron Mag, uh, ironmaglabs.com. Use coupon code JEFF15 for 15% off. G-E-O-F-F-1-5. Uh, I put that in at checkout. You get 15% off your order. Orders of $300 or more are free shipping. And follow Lee Priest on Instagram. Lee A. Priest. Yeah. And uh, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. So with that, until next time, this is International Iron, brought to you by IronMagLabs.com. For Sith Lord, Jason Genova, and <laughs> Lee Priest, the Blonde Myth. Uh, I'm going to do a poo. What's that? I'm going to do a poo. You're going to do a poo. Lucky you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> with that. <laughs> we learned we all about the old Jason, eh? Yeah, we definitely <laughs> did. Holy cow. <laughs>